On this week's New Zealand episode, we travel to the land of the hobbits. We catch up with award-winning photographer Trey Ratcliffe to give us a few tips on landscape photography. Actually, I'll, we'll give you five, and I'll wrap it all up into one tight little package. And we travel to Mount Doom only to come across one of Middle Earth's great beasts. I love the noise of the hooves in the water. Are they hooves or are they feet? We're on our way to Hobbiton, where the hobbits live, and I figure it's going to be good for a photo. I've never been to a proper film set before, so uh, this is going to be pretty exciting. Maybe. It's also a Sunday, so I'm kind of nervous how busy it's going to be. There's a cow. The drive to the Hobbiton Film Set Park is about two hours south of Auckland in the North Island of New Zealand. As you get closer, everything along the road starts to look a lot like the Shire. We've made it to the home of the Hobbits, and it turns out it's a bus tour, and it's a two-hour guided bus tour. I'm not really a fan of forced tourism. I like just kind of going at my own speed and doing things. That's why we rent cars when we go places. Um, but it still looks really cool, so I don't know. We just won't be able to do any sweet drifting uh, laps of the movie set in a rental car, unfortunately. Who's excited for a bus tour? In actuality, the bus portion of the tour is just to bring the guided groups to the former film set location. We're out of the village of Hobbiton for the next about 90 minutes, then we'll go grab that drink at the Green Dragon Pub. Our tour guide ended up being cast on Survivor New Zealand Season 2. I know, Survivor is still on the air. I'm impressed too. Some of the hobbit holes are small, some are big. This one's a smaller one, so basically if I was Gandalf, I would be in the yard in front of this one making myself look gigantic. It's called Force Perspective, and uh, it's kind of cool. If you are coming on this tour, the 16 to 35 is your best bet. It gets super wide because there are a lot of people here, um, but you can kind of fight your way to the front and get nice and close to get a photo or two. I'm also using a polarizer to make the sky a little bit more uh, more interesting and cinematic than it typically is. So this one is actually to scale because I have to walk into it. Uh, all the other ones, a lot smaller, a lot of playing with forced perspectives in The Lord of the Rings is. Also, also this is Sam's house. In the Lord of the Rings, they're having a party in this tent when Frodo, is it Frodo? When a couple of the pranksters decide to light off a dragon firework that terrifies and inspires the Hobbit community. All right, so I want this photo, but I don't really want any people in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to handhold about five or six exposures, uh, just kind of evenly spaced out. And then when I get back in Photoshop, I'm going to load them all up auto-align them and hit the median button and that's going to erase all the people it's going to give me the average of all the photos and in all the photos chances are nobody stood exactly still uh, the people are moving across the bridge so they should all disappear the level of detail in this set is ridiculous uh, down to the fact that whenever they have the little tiny hang lines for the laundry, uh, that they had somebody walk up and down the hill a bunch of times just to make it look like there was a track that the laundry line was actually in use. Also, don't think of this tour as an $80 tour. Think of it as an $80 beer. Never thought I'd come to the Green Dragon. Who gets to come here? I guess a lot of people, especially on Sundays. We then caught up with photographer Trey Ratcliffe to ask him about his approach when it comes to taking landscape photos. The five things universally people like to see in photos are some grassland or some openness, um, some fresh water, um, a path, um, some foliage or trees, and last distance or some mountains. So the more of those five things you get in your photo, the more satisfying it is. And there's been this anthropological analysis of why do people like these things. Well, one, people like to see grasslands or openness 
because it goes back really to our roots on the savanna, you know, as we're evolving, just surviving. And having open grassland allows you to see prey or predators. They say that's why people like to have like big green lawns around their house, because it's sort of a strange thing, right? Why, why do people surround their house with green fuzz? It's sort of a strange thing, but it kind of gets back to that. Um, a second thing people like to see is fresh water, because you're, you're always thinking, how far do I have to go to get fresh water for me and my family and my village and bring it back? This is a very common thing, because humans have to have lots of fresh water every day, so you're focused on that. Um, another thing people like to see is distance or mountains, something that gives it scale to know if weather is coming towards you. So how long do you have to prepare for that weather? In the case in point for the foliage or woods is you like to have shelter to protect yourself from animals or weather or be able to build things, so having trees and this kind of stuff is good. And the last thing is a path, because a path indicates either human habitation or a game trail. I don't think about this stuff actively while I'm out shooting, but if I have an opportunity to include a path, I put a path in there. Um, if, I can get, if I can show more fresh water and then less fresh water, I show more fresh water. Try to get a little tree element in there, try to make people feel like they could walk around inside this environment. Um, those, those seem to do pretty well. Taking his advice, we set out to some prime photo locations. Luckily, we didn't have to drive far given the natural beauty of Queenstown and everything surrounding it. This photo looks a lot like a painting with the light kind of happening up above the mountains there. Uh, 7200 with circular polarizer. Very good choice for this. Uh, also, it looks like the clouds are kind of all breaking up entirely, so hopefully, fingers crossed, the drive is only going to get better. We want to capture a photo and we want to make it look good or as good as it possibly can, uh, even though we aren't here at sunrise or sunset. So basically what I'm doing here is I have my 7200 on, focused on the mountain way out here, the one that's uh, not too hazy. I really like the one that's uh, over to the left, but it is uh, a little too hazy and requires a little too much post-production. Whereas this one over here is still nice and crisp, it's nice, it's close enough. I basically have set my tripod up on the ground here, uh, close to the water, and I have a neutral density filter on it, a 10 stop ND, which basically acts like sunglasses so that I can do a 15 second exposure. Uh, of the water so that focus on this mountain here I can basically get rid of all the waves so it just looks like a calm serene day and uh, I know that that's maybe not true to life as it is today but I think that that is the way that we are going to get the best picture so let's take that photo all right so I am low to the ground here because I want to get the water as the bottom third of the frame um, using the rule of thirds, I want the water as the bottom, the mountain as the center, and the sky and the cloud up at the top here. As far as settings go, I'm shooting 15 seconds at f14 and 100 ISO. And that's what it looks like. Another variation you can do with this scene is you can use a wide angle lens and a long exposure as well to get the water nice and smooth, um, but to have a lot more of that water in the scene rather than the mountains. Uh, it's totally personal preference what you decide that you like the best, but uh, here is the other option as well. Basically what we're going to do is just move the tripod into the water and uh, same neutral density filter, same exposure setting, same everything, and uh, I'll just show you what that looks like. Pro tip, when you plan your next trip to New Zealand, or really anywhere you want to experience the natural world around you, rent a vehicle with four-wheel drive. We've been driving around very responsibly. And we came across this amazing cow just having a drink out here today. Uh, so we're gonna take some pictures and see what that looks like. We're here at Isengard. There's no tower in real life, but I can draw one for you right now in Photoshop. There are jet boats in Isengard now, no longer Frodo and Saruman. Just jet boats. Tourism has taken over the Lord of the Rings. While there may be jet boats in Isengard, there is plenty of land around New Zealand where the jet boats cannot go. The country is deceivingly large and 100% worth exploring. 
On next week's episode, we cruise through Milford Sound with some freshwater dolphins. There's really no contrast when we're photographing dolphins in dark water. And we photograph one of the most famous trees in the world, the Wanaka tree. 